hello welcome back my people so um if you remember i posted a video and i said that i would definitely be coming back to, to talk about the uh, domestic violence women okay you all welcome back to my youtube channel please do me a favor of subscribing clicking on the uh, notification bell so that Whenever I get to post something, it will be among the videos, among those who receive the notification, among the first set of people. Like, if you noticed, um, in my first video, I actually did this makeup. I don't know if I really tried because I just do you know, I didn't really focus on it because I was busy doing the makeup and I was trying to explain to you guys what's actually got me here. Yeah. Okay. So today, guys, we want to talk about domestic abuse. First of all, domestic abuse is a crisis that affects us all, and it has devastating um, impacts. A woman who is being killed by a male partner or former partner. Almost every four days in the UK or in Africa. Yeah. Not only in the UK, in the, in, both in Africa, almost every four days. So, this has to change. It has to, it has to stop. It has to change. So, friends. You know, domestic violence has so many needs. It has so many um it has so many means behind it, so many stories, so many reasons. But I do not see the reason why you should be um beating or violating the lady you promise to love. The one you call the flesh of your flesh, the bone of your bone, why you should be maltreating this lady every day of her life to the extent of taking his or taking her life this has to stop this has to stop like i know of an italian lady um she has me with my studies and stuff her niece was actually killed by her boyfriend this is just a boyfriend so how did this happen the boy was, um, he was not an alcoholic, no, but he had his psychological problems, he was so, so, you know, how would I say, he was the lazy type, he didn't want to walk. Oh, sorry. He didn't want to walk, he was, um, insecure of himself, so... I decided to take control of this means of you know, my friend. When they started dating, he tried his best to make sure she left her family. She did not have this bond with her family again. He tried to make sure she could not, she shouldn't be telling her family everything. He tried to remove her from her social life and started making her attend the kind of social life he wants. You know? Uh, when they went outside, in fact, there were two, three testimonies of people at her, at the court, at the case in court after she was dead. There was this testimony that um, she, when they went out to a restaurant to eat together, the boy was like shouting at her like, "You're hating too much. You're getting too fat. Can't you see?" Um, so so and so person from me. Can't you see Claudia? The way she's slim, the way she's sexy. So why are you eating this much? You are, you are, you are getting. So the lady was like, we are outside. We are worried. We are worried. We are outside. And he was like, come with me. Any comment? Let's go to the bedroom and talk. The bedroom of the restaurant. So when I went to the bedroom of the restaurant, I actually heard him hitting the lady, hitting this girl. That he was, he hit her, he slapped her. And we arguing. So when they went to knock and we asking her to tap us, so is everything okay? So it was like, 
she, no, she said, no, 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 everything is fine, everything is fine. And just saying one or two, passing one or two words with each other, everything is fine. So they went away, but they knew they were arguing. But they went, they wanted to bring that here, but she was the one that said to took care. She, she, she was afraid. Oh, should I say she was afraid? I won't say she was really afraid because she came from a rich family. This lady, this my friend, this Italian woman, she, she comes from a rich family. So she came from a rich family. She was the one actually taking care of this guy. So I won't say she was afraid. She was not afraid. She was in love. She, loved, she was in love with this psychological mental person. So, she was in love with him, actually. And um, different kind of episodes started happening. And um, even the house they were staying, the both of them were staying, the house was given to them by this lady's mother to show you how rich the family are. This apartment was given to them by the lady's mother. This story is, is touching because it's someone who I'm close to, the Italian lady who helps me a lot. It's her knees. I saw her broken. When this thing happened, she was broken. She was nervous. In fact, she always called me. She always be like, don't you ever allow any man put you down. Don't you ever... Are you sure your boyfriend is not maltreating you? Are you sure you are okay? Don't you ever allow any man, you know? I don't think any man deserves to be shitting on a lady. If you are done, tell them you are done. Don't you ever keep on using them like fools and be shitting on them. She was so, so, so bitter and angry because of what happened to her knees. So she wanted to free this anger. She wanted to, you know, escalate better. She wanted to feel free, you know. I saw this anger in her that... I understood the pain of losing your very young niece to so-called love. This lady was not afraid. She was in love. She could have gone to the police station and do something, but she was in love. She always defended him. When the family of her was always like, this guy is no good. She always defended him. She always defending me. Oh my gosh, can you guys please? Okay. She always defended this guy. She was like, no, no, my mama, you know, they could see you. It's not like this. It's, it's, it's a good guy. It's nice. It's looking, it's searching for a job, but he can't find. They love. Even the people living in the house, we are always like calling this um, my friend's um, sister because it's it's our elder sister that lost this child. So this is my friend is an Italian lady. Our sister, our sister's daughter is the one who actually was killed by her boyfriend. And so it's her niece. We were always calling the mother of this girl like, your daughter is um is being maltreated. She's not being taken care of. She's they're always quarreling. We fear for her. Whenever the family called her, she always like give them this fake smile. Whenever the family called the both of them to come over for dinner or for breakfast, they would always be smiling, you know. But the family knew, you know, when you have the sense of somebody like, I don't like your spirit. They had this 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 idea, they had this spirit, but she was um unhurt, so they couldn't de decide for her like you're not dating this person. No. And it's a free world, Charlie here in Europe. It's it's a free world. You can't decide for it. Even if for a fifteen years old girl, like you have to date this, you don't have to date it. You can't decide for them. 
So, um, they went on like this. He was always auditioning me how you fat, you need to reduce. He always was asking for money. Whenever she couldn't give him money, he was always hitting the wall with his hands. He was always hungry, you know. And to my own understanding, I believe he could also be cheating with her on, on her. But she had never caught him once. Even if she had caught him, I believe he would have burned and she would have forgiven him and moved on. But she didn't tell anybody. And you know, she continues saying, saying that because this guy brainwashed her actually. This guy told her, You're nobody. You're, you're fat. Nobody will accept you if you break up. No guy will accept you. I'm trying to place you in order. He damaged her brain. He made her feel uncomfortable. He made her become so insecure. She was like, oh my gosh, if I leave this guy, who's ever going to come? So she could only trust this guy. But I don't know why she would have trusted this guy more than her whole family who raised her for almost all her life, who offered her the house she's staying, she's working, she's well paid. She has a family like, I don't know, I don't know why she decided to trust this guy actually. So be it on this um, misfortune day. Yeah, so rest in peace actually. This happened at Napoli, Napoli, Napel, Italy. Even the story is on news. I have the video when it was on news. It's called Kila Vista. If you go on this program, this uh, news on um, Shane Kila Vista, you see a story there among the ladies, the women that have been killed by domestic violence. Uh, actually, so she decided to continue this relationship and. On a very good day, they were quarreling, and the mother of the boy was with them in the house. So, when the house of which the mother of the girl is the owner, so when they were quarreling, it was really hard. It was hot. So, the neighbors had to call the mother of the girl, like they have started again, they have to come and see this yourself. Mm. So, mm. The mother of the girl went there. She went to she went to the house. When she went to the house, she heard them quarreling. She continued knocking. She opened the door. The boy opened the door. I was like, "You are not coming inside." Even to the who has the woman gave them, he was like, "You're not coming inside. They're not allowing me in." So he was blocking the entrance. The mother of the boy was like, let her come in, let her come in. I think he even pushed the mother of the girl, like, you are not coming in. So, when, um, when he was saying you are not coming in, it's like he left her, oh, uh, he backed the door, he left her, went to the girl and pushed the girl through the balcony from fourth or third floor and she fell down. She fell down and she gave up. But falling down, she was shouted. And so, Abby, the were neighbors out in the opposite her back on him that they're like, you know, even here in Europe, when you are quarreling or they are shouting or when there's too much music, you see people coming out from their back on they'll be looking at your back on to understand what is going on. So, there are people there who are actually observing. So, when she fell down, She was when she when she was falling down she was shouting so they saw everything they, they saw everything so uh, when this happened the mother of the boy opened the door so the mother of the girl came in ran towards the balcony to go unfortunately she was no she didn't even go inside the house at all so when she heard a child shouting she shouting and you know when someone falls with that full force boom. She had to run downstairs and see her beautiful baby girl lying lifelessly on the floor. 
Ambler's came with two cats to the hospital, but she could not make it. This was just the, the mother has just two of them, two girls, and this was the head of the the eldest one. She couldn't, you know, she suffered because every time I had to call this my friend, she would always be like, "Hey, I'm still here with my sister. I can't actually come to my city yet. I'm still here because she's not eating. She's not going out." Then at the time, the other ones I called, well, she's eating now, but she's eating too much. She's putting all the anger, all the nervousness inside of food and is doing her a lot of damage. She's not talking to anybody. So, everyone was, I really felt for the family. I really did hurt because this was a boy the family hurt. It was saying the has given to them by the family. He was being fed, fed up with this girl. Like, if you're tired, couldn't you just have told her, I, I ain't doing this shit no more? You could have even told the girl, okay, I'm coming, and you could have just from there go away. But no, you decided to push this lady to death. It was the night when the case arrived at court, it was the night that he didn't push her, that she was the one that pushed. Something would have pushed her to push herself. He could have starved her enough. She would have been tired like, I have to run fat. If this one leaves me, what is life for? So she would just be like, let me just take my life and end it all. You have pushed her, you have rewashed her, you have damaged this lady. It brainwashed and it tortured her psychologically. Domestic violence cannot only be beaten. If you are being beaten, it's better than psychological. You are being tortured psychologically because the beating will be showing in your body. Your friends will know how to help you. They will know how to talk to this man. They will know how to intervene. But if you are being tortured psychologically, there are no mass, no scars in your body to prove that you have been tortured. It's, been, it's torturing you psychologically. It could be the type is not sleeping at home. It could be he's not eating your food. It could be he's ghosting you. You guys can be staying together. It be. You won't even know. You won't even know if you are living with somebody in the same house, because you don't talk to each other. It could be is telling you things that make you feel like you are worthless. You see why in the other video I told you you have to tell your baby girls always, baby you are strong, mama you are strong, mama you are beautiful. If anybody arm you with words, arm them with words. Something if if he wasn't the one that because he denied he wasn't the one that pushed her, something could have led to this sudden awakening of her like, okay, I'm done, I'm done. Before she pushed herself, you have tortured her enough. If she was happy in the relationship, she won't go to the extent of killing herself. Was, uh, when I heard it, I was like, okay. And it took them almost two years to judge this case. So, by the time it, it was time for them to finally give them give him his punishment, you know what he did? He and his lawyer defended himself for it. Well, I have another fiance now, in which we have a baby together. <laughs> that was what he said. He immediately went to impregnate another lady before his punishment came out so that when they would say um he has a baby mm, he can he can't go to prison because he has to catch up for the baby or well he can go to prison but he always be going out to see the baby once in a week he wanted something to help him out he wanted something he didn't even knew he didn't even acknowledge the fact that he had killed someone you had the mind after killing someone to impregnate another lady to go immediately into another relationship after taking a soul he didn't even acknowledge what was going on he didn't even know if he had killed someone but i saw the videos i was just like what the f what is this i can't play it here for copyright because i have to claim on um, i have to ask for permission from this my friend but i have the video on my phone you know, it went ahead at getting another lady pregnant, 
he, he, he had a, ba a baby girl, you know. And the judge said, you have a baby, fine, the mother can take care of the baby. There are lots of help she can get from her sister socially, that's social help, social workers, um, all this um, social, and um, there are lots of herbs here, you know, there are lots of places you can go for herbs. She can go there, they can help her. The government can help her with this child. But as for you, you are serving a jail time. He went to jail. The family first believed a bit that justice was served. But they still continue missing the baby girl, the girl. Because our pictures are always there. The good moments are always there. Do you know how hard it is for a mother to bury a child? Not the child bearing the mother. Do you know how hard it is? Not a baby girl, not a newborn child that if you say, okay, I can give birth to another one. A grown-up lady of almost 30 who's supposed to be getting married and providing grandkids for you, the mother. Do you know how hard it is? And he just took the life like this and, you know, got another lady pregnant. And now my question is, what lies did he tell to this lady that this one had to get pregnant for him? Or did she say she didn't see the news on, on, on internet, on, on, on news, on TV? She can't say that. This guy wasn't an, an alcoholic. He was not a drunkard, he didn't drink. It was there was something wrong with him psychologically. He wasn't trained well. He wasn't trained well. So this lady had to die and you 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 immediately had the girls to zip down your bottom of your of your trousers or your knickers and put those things he think he has he can use to get every lady and get another one pregnant and think justice will not be served i think well justice was served because it was in my country i won't say africa but in my country nigeria justice won't be so served you know especially if he had killed the child of um of a, of a poor man he won't have got they won't have got justice they would just have okay um they would have paid money if if he came from in a rich family they would have paid money and changed the case settle the family or will try to settle the family the family does not accept that's their own case but they will free the boy they will definitely free the boy they might even try to the family that if you continue with this case your whole family will be wiped out but i thank god you laws protect citizens and so justice was served you can't see the baby you can't see the baby and i hope they also declare that you won't be able to see the baby even after his jail time his punishment wasn't life imprisonment no i i don't i can't remember no i don't think so it wasn't life imprisonment but the punishment they gave him adding to his age i found it i find it difficult if he will be able to survive when he comes out or if he even comes out there are a lot of things that will be changed and he won't be able to cope if he will still be alive before he comes out so please ladies before you die over or for a man in the relationship let him be worth it. Romeo and Juliet law was yes worth dying for. Because when Romeo found out that Juliet was dead, he thought Juliet was dead, he immediately killed himself. Wherever I go, I come with you. So when Juliet woke up and saw Romeo was dead, really dead, she wasn't actually dead. I think she fainted if I can really remember that scene. She actually took the substance and killed herself too. That is worth dying for. 
you know, because they trusted and loved each other. Can you remember Titanic? That was a real life story. The lady that it really happened to, I watched the, the, the real life, um, um, how will I call it now? Um, real life fame and everything. She was saying everything. She's a old lady now. She was saying everything and they were, um, they used someone else to hurt the, the fame, you know? It was, you know, that love was, yes, love for love. To date, she still remembers him. I don't, I can't remember if she still got, I don't think she didn't get married. But, um, she was carrying his baby, if I can really remember. That story was a real life story. I know such times are gone. To find such love in this hour time is, is, is hard. But know the kind of person or man you are fighting for. To not allow any man brainwash you, you are not beautiful. Ah ah. To not allow any man tell you, ah, baby, you just born finish, you won't just fat. Ask and say, when you new see me, that's why I fat. So why you not do something to make I fall in? Ask and say, are they old? Are they old? Are they, old? Are they young? You say, you go to and say, ah, baby, the way me say they fat. They saw you say they slim. No, they shop you. You know, come the sexy device they find you. If they hurt you, it's worse. Hurt them, it's worse. If you can't hurt him, but tell him those words you said to me, don't you ever say it. Don't make me go to depression for nothing, say. Don't allow any man to tell you you're hotly. You don't have hair. You have to go and do boobs. This, that. Hello. Hello. Oh, God. See, eh? Before going into any marriage, even if you don't need them um, pray together with the man, pray alone. Let God direct you and bless the marriage. Let God direct you. Even in your even if you meet the right partner, things will come up. Problems will come up in that marriage. Huh. If you don't have patience, self, Kasala go boss for the marriage. If you be the type of body they pay, you might wound him. If you like if you the type. The marriage not gonna last six months or one year. That's marriage for you. But pray to God to guide you. If it's necessary, go see a psychologist together. Go see a marriage counselor together. Nothing is wrong. No one should ever tell you blacks don't go see marriage counselor. Black go see psychologist. That's a big lie. Blacks, whites, we are all the same. We all use brains. We all function with mental. Okay, when God created us, He didn't say, These are the blacks' brain. I want to make them more, more strong in the brain. They won't be able to see. God didn't, I don't know. You know, He made us out of one, one. He made us out of sand, which is from our, our, our father, Adam, and He breathed into us. The Bible didn't tell us, He said, this on this, I want to see this one to be black, I want this one to be white. You know, we even being black is depending on the, the, the way the, the, we came from Africa because they're their son. You know, that's the difference. You should go into studies. God did not create anyone black or white separately. Say this one is unique, this one is not unique. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. You should do studies yourself. When he created us, he created us in his own likeness and image. That was what the Bible told us. He created us in his own likeness and image. So if anyone talks to you, tell them, oh, excuse me. If you see me, you see the likeness and image of God. Speak boldly. Don't allow anyone to put you down. Because you are from the descendants of Adam and Eve. He said, let's make man in our whole likeness and image. And when he made him, he said, this is good. The works of his end. So you want a man made like you, man, man, to come to put you down? Hey, God in heaven.
careful. Please, dear, if the relationship is getting toxic, So guys, like I was saying before, you can imagine the pains this lady had to went through by losing a child, a grown up dog child. So please, when we are trying to you know, um, fall, let's say, get married to somebody we know we are so in love. I know at times during the courtship, the man might be so so nice. They will not even show their real colors. You know, it's when after they get married to you, you know, um, after some few times of getting married to you, they begin to show their real colors. But that doesn't mean you're stuck. It's not like your life depends on this marriage. It's not a do or die affair. It's not like you're stuck. I'm not telling you you have to divorce him, but try talking to him. If he doesn't want to listen to you, talk to him to see a marriage, a counselor, a psychologist, to take some time off, like you guys should go on a, on in a all day romantic one. Uh, excuse me, a moment. You guys should take um some some days off. I don't know if you guys can hear the background because I actually have um, my friend who is actually on the um, video conference. So, so please, um, I'll say you propose you guys go on a, on a holiday, you know, romantic holiday alone with the children. Um, if he if doesn't agree, we can decide to. See a therapist, yeah, a therapist, or you can actually go speak with your pastor. But before you do speak with your pastor, make sure to have his consent because at times you might find it like you respect your pastor more than his own opinion and privacy. So try to get his consent, try to make him understand you're doing this because you cherish the marriage, you do not wish to lose the marriage for anything in the world try to make him see those reasons if he still doesn't work i'm not telling you to divorce him but to not allow yourself to be psychologically and abused or maltreated or even being beaten or maltreated in your own marriage by this man who promised you love, care, cherish for better for worst. Better for worst doesn't mean beating. It means when things are are good, when there are resources and everything. And for worst is maybe when there is no charge coming, things are resources are going down. You would dare to help him, you're not leaving, or he's not leaving you. That's for better for worse. Better for worse has nothing to do with beating. Even in the Bible, there's never a time the Bible says, ah, the man is the heir, so therefore he has the rule, he has to he has the command. No. The man is the head of the house, just like the way Christ is the head of the church. But Christ does not punish us. He does not punish us. So do not allow a man to punish you mentally or physically. Your life matters. Your life matters. You need to live for those children. Even if you don't have a child yet, you need to live for your parents. You need to continue to bear your family's name. You're a lady. You need to do great things. Being married will not stop you from doing great things, okay? So guys, um, there's this, there are lots of myths that says um, these are the reason why domestic violence have been caused. There are lots of my myths, a lot of sayings, a lot of reasons. So let's start looking into these reasons. So number one will be alcohol and drugs makes men more violent. Is this true? Is this really true that alcohol and drinks um, 
makes um, alcohol and drugs makes men violent and um, makes men more violent. That's not true. That's not true. Most men do drink when they come back, they are sober. At times, some when they even come back, they will even be behaving like babies, like they won't hug you more. You know, most times alcohol and drinks, most times most people don't take it to relax their brain, they find refuge in this substance. But if one takes it and becomes aggressive, he notice he has done damage once, twice, he do not stop, he continue taking it. That person is naturally aggressive. There is no two ways about it. He's aggressive and he's aggressive. Six, don't cover up for no man who is being aggressive with alcohol and drugs. Okay? Do not cover up for such men. Just like my research says, the American says, in reality, alcohol and drugs can make existing abuse worse. If there's already an abuse, it makes it worse. Or it could also be a catalyst for an attack. But they do not cause domestic abuse alcohol and just like i explained it at times they may be even sober but then you will see one who takes alcohol is is, is violent is arrogant and um, it increases the chance of being violent it opens the way for violence but it doesn't mean you have to be violent no Allora. Many people use alcohol or drugs and do not abuse their partner. I know most of you might be watching this and you can't testify to read that. They do not abuse their partner. So it should never be used to be an excuse for violence or controlling behavior. The perpetrator alone is responsible for his actions. You see some after they are drunk, they say, oh, when they get there, say, oh, baby, it was because I'm drunk. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but you are the perpetrator. That's your character. Alcohol is something nice. Alcohol are also used for so many, many things. So is drug. There are a lot of drugs that are used for so many, many things, but at times they become drug abuse because they are being used in the wrong way. You understand? It doesn't, it doesn't really need to... to it's not an excuse to say alcohol is the reason why I do violate you. No, it's not an excuse. Then there is this mind too that say if it was that bad, she would have left. She would leave. Really? Do you think it's easy? Do you think it's easy? You are saying mm, if the domestic violence was that hard. She would have left the marriage. Really? Just a moment, guys, please. So, um, sorry, that was a call from um, my partner. That was a call from my partner. We do, you know, pack my, my party. Okay, so, um, so another means is, um, if it was that bad, she would, she would leave. Or she would have left. It's not easy. It's not. It's not easy for you to, you know, for you to to be in love with somebody before, and all of a sudden the person changes his character. You you start blaming yourself. You'll be like, what did I do wrong? 
Why did it change? Is there something I did wrong that is using against me? You'll be like, can't you just tell me what I did wrong so I can apologize? You you want to know what is it that you actually did to this 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 man? You want to know like where is my partner? Why has it changed? You know? <laughs> You'll be like is there is there a lady out there confusing him? Or you even want to stay for the sake of your children because you do not want to give birth to children here and there, just like our parents did long time ago. Or you will be like, ah, what will people say if I leave this marriage? And you need to know something. When a marriage is successful, do people give it give the credits to the man? If a marriage is broken, they blame mostly the woman. In our society, it is this way. If a marriage is successful, the credits are being given mostly to the man. They'll say he's a tolerant man. He tolerates her character. But if the marriage cuts her, it is being put on the put on the woman. She takes eighty percent of the blame. They will be like, ah, she not fit here in the high side. They are her, so she not fit here. What did they do when she passed through? Our mother has not fit past you. Most of you watching this video will be among those criticizing. Even most of you would have even maybe one of a lot of you even criticized person before before coming across this video. True of us. Let's be realistic. It's not easy for you to get married. Then all of a sudden the man changes and start beating you. You will not be like, I will leave this marriage. It's not easy. But you have to. It's not easy for you to say you want to leave your marriage where you've built. Then you promise to love and cherish for better for worst. And maybe you're still in love with them now. And their children. You do not want the children to grow without noticing the figure of a father. Of a father. It's, um, it's not easy, guys. So... So guys, it's not easy. We really need to stop criticizing and saying that word. That word. I have the thing add if I don't promote now. So according to my research, it says in reality, women stay in abusive relationship for many, many reasons. Just like I said, it says, and it can be very difficult for a woman to leave an abusive partner, even if she wants to. Let me tell you something. You see a lady who grew up from a family whereby the father was an alcoholist, was always beating the mother. They tend to always come in contact with men who are abusers. At times, they really do tend to come in contact with men like this. And there are times she meant once to leave that relationship or that marriage. But you know, we ladies, we are easy to convince. You may ask for forgiveness, we forgive, but we won't forget. But once the cop don't fall, when the ladies really, really says, I've had enough, like I've had enough, even the devil himself will be afraid of, a, of that lady. If that woman really verses, say, ah, Instead of me to leave this marriage, that I don't pay this man back for all the damage he did. Instead of me to leave, I will make him suffer. If woman take that decision, even devil himself will fear. <laughs> devil himself will fear. <laughs> so Mary says, say, even if she wants to, it is hard, it is difficult. Like any other relationship. One that ends in abuse begins with falling in love and being in love. There are lots of women you see when their partner are beating them, they're always like they're covering yourself, trying to baby, why are you doing this? Forgive me. They are even becoming more in love. You know, I don't really know how those things are done, but that's nature. 
that was natural. She wants to know what she has gone wrong, like I said before. She wants to know what's, what, what has gone wrong, what have I done? The beginning was not like this. She wants to prove she still loves you. And she she trying to prove she loves you. She's developing more feelings with her uh, knowing directly. One thing we should know. And it says, abuse really starts at the beginning of a relationship. That's true, like I said. But when it is established, and often harder to leave. When it's established, it's hard to leave. A woman may, may still be in love with her partner and believe him when he says he's sorry and it won't happen again. Mm -hmm. I said this before. We are easy to forgive. We easily forgive, but we don't easily forget. She may be fighting for the for her life or for the safety of her children if she leaves. Yeah. Because she knows maybe the mama has come after her. She may have nowhere to go. She may have no financial independence. Ladies, another word. She might have no financial independence. You have to be a lady. You have to be strong. You have to be hardworking. You have to be financially stable. You have to have something doing, even if it's online business, anything that gives you money. That when your husband say does not bring today, you can prepare a pot of soup and say, okay, let's eat. Not when you want to buy pants early, can I take from that? You want to buy bra, pampas, everything. The day it won't bring money to eat, you so guy. The day it won't bring money to eat, you can't cook a pot of soup. It's not done, it's not good. You need to be a financially strong woman. The day you won't bring money, you cook soup. Rob is there and say, when you come and eat, especially made for you. Make sure you guys sleep with smiles that night he will provide. He will respect you. Except he's the son of devil himself. He won't change. If he is, if there's still some good in him, he will respect you. There are some men who will be like, I don't want you to work, I want you to take care of your children, be a housewife. Fine, of course, no problems. But will you be a house husband? Huh? Yeah, was it reason that uh, only a woman has to take care of the child, has to change the pampas and everything? Okay, fine. Even if you don't want to ask him that question, tell him, okay, okay, I'll be a housewife. But I need to be doing online business with my phone. With phone. Or computer, I'll be at home. I'll be doing my online business. My children are hungry. I know when to take care of them. I know when to give them food. But I'll be at home. I won't be leaving home and leaving the children for nannies. But I will be doing online business because when we are dating, we didn't say something like this. Except you guys say something like, ah, maybe you'll be a full time housewife. And you said, okay, no problem, no problems. Except that if that's the case, but as a lady, you have to be financially stable. Even if there is no argument in the marriage, the marriage is going fine. I say, lady, you need to take financial stable. You don't need to depend on your man for everything. Believe me, you need to take financially stable. Eh? You need to take effort. Once in a while, you just see buy and give. Today, they are bought you this. Maybe I saw this and I, I go find for your body manager. Even if my five naira or something. Even if my five naira. He go, he go collect and finish. He go say thank you. They go come back say ha. So when I found the results in that but for a man, he go say yes. This woman got me. You get me for mind. He go to stimulate her more to do more. Not be saying you know they buy gift or right. You know they do anything for you. Can always ask him, ask him, ask. Him. You will look like a liability to him. You will look like a liability. Not be lie. Even you say you know they complain, it's you got a team can and he gave you a good wish. He can't have to let you the know, say they think you as liability. If he not saw you, he's the head of the house, he's supposed to take care of you, yes. But you are supposed to support him. You are the neck. Without the neck, head no will stand. If you can't still do online business, help him to plan his money, help him to plan his way of spending, help him to plan his business, his work. He will respect you. He will respect you. So, like I said, abusers often um, they isolate their partners from family and friends to control them. 
that was the story I told I said from the beginning about this my friend's um, niece she lost. He tried his best to make sure she wasn't communicating with the family. He made and brainwashed her that she was fat. If she left him, nobody would accept him. And in order for them to control them, of course, making it even more difficult for an abused woman to exist the relationship. Women in abusive relationships need support and understanding, not judgment. No judgment, please. Don't judge them. Don't judge them. They need help. They need help. They need help. They don't need judgment. I just, you know, at times I, 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 I try to imagine the scene of you eating the lady, blowing the lady you say you love. I try to imagine the scene to see this lady is crying. Are you not touched? Are you not touched? They are men like, would they ever mistakenly slap their wife? Try that day, they would be. Though they fear, they will just be like, they're not going to feel look into their wife's face. They only slap, slap, they only slap. Oh. They will be like, what am I turning into? Am I turning into a monster? Oh my God, I wasn't brought up this way. What am I doing? They won't even be able to look at their wife's face. They will be begging for mercy, talk less of you. And then those ones when they beat with me, when you get better. Another topic for another day. Another topic for another day. Guys, no matter no matter what a lady will do to you, if she's carrying your child, you shouldn't lay your fingers on her. And if you've done that before, make sure you are deeply sorry from your heart. And make sure it doesn't repeat itself. Because if it repeats itself, just know you are a monster. No two ways about it. You are a monster. And you can't change. And if you do not change, she will exit and leave you. Then you will go and jam a tough lady. The one where they make man miserable. Or the one where they use juju sham to the woman. If you owe you, you will wash her pants, drink the water safe. They are such women. We know this. We are Africans. Let us behave at least as if these things do not exist. It exists. It does, it do exist. So um, number three um myths, number three things that people do say is domestic abuse always involves physical violence. Okay. In this part, before I read on what my research says, domestic abuse doesn't always involve physical uh, violence. So, this is my my friend's niece. If he, she was always beating the mark for the shoe, a family for himself, you understand? The ma he wasn't beating her. He was torturing her mentally. He made, he, he made sure to take down her self-esteem. Then he started making her to know, understand that she was less important. She's a nobody. He started making her understand that she was a nobody. So my 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 just like my research says, my research says domestic abuse does not always include physical violence. Like I said, it says women aid define domestic abuse as an accident, incident, or partner of incident of controlling cocave. I will explain what cocave means. Threatening, degrading, and violent behaviors. Which include sexual violence by the partner or ex-partner. This incident can include coercive control. Coercive control of psychological abuse. You understand? Yeah, they are psychological or physical abuse. So they are psychological, physical, and emotional abuse. That's a coercive um uh, control. Coercive abuse. Coercive um control. So, there are physical abuse, sexual abuse, financial abuse, psychological and emotional abuse, harassment, they are taking an online or digital abuse. So, that of online and digital abuse could be um, cyberbullying, 
um, products that they're putting in which um some you know they have a video or a picture of you being naked and they are threatening you that if you do not give me if you do not come and make me feel okay if you do not give me sex i'm going to re release this i'm going to stalk you i'm going to send me money they will make sure to financially stalk you down you know things like that are done then number four meet four he can be a good father even if he abuses his partner. <laughs> the parents' relationship does not have to affect the children. He can be a good father even if he violates, abuses his partner. How are you a good father if you violate your partner? Or don't you think <laughs> you can't be a good father if you violate your partner? Even if you buy your children all the things in the world, you can't be a good father at all. And then they say the parents' relationship doesn't have to affect the children. Of course, it affects the children. It affects them because they are seeing everything. They are registering everything in their memories. Most of these violent, the violent men you see now, this has any kind of family they grew up from. They tell you polygamous family. Family where my mother was neglected and the other one I was being loved the most. Family where my father had to always be my mother. That was that's the kind of family they grew up from. So guys, that word is so so wrong. So my research research said in reality, an estimated 90% of children whose murders are abused witness the happiness. This effect are traumatic and long lasting. When a child witnesses domestic abuse, this is child abuse. Between 40% and 70% of these children are also direct victims of the abuse, which is happening at home. Yeah. At times, they will become abused by their own father because as the father is beating their mother the child is daddy leave my mommy alone then it will just be like shut up your mouth he hits her or him child abuse he's abusing the both of them this thing is causing emotional traumatic psychological problems to the children and they are registering everything in their head then meets five she provokes him she provokes him. So you mean most people will say that because she provoke her. You mean if the man provoke the woman, what is the woman supposed to do? I suppose she shoot can I suppose poison her. Hmm? But when does she not get power to say beat the man? She supposed to she supposed to say she shoot she can poison her. But based on say the man get physical power now. If she provoke him, the man supposed to come and beat him. Nothing like let's sit down and talk. Abby. You know, you you know, men have physical powers, but they don't have the mental and the real power. They don't have it. They only have the physical powers. So that word she provoked him shouldn't be said. So my 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 research says real in reality this means is widespread and deep rooted. It is often based on the belief that the man is the head of the house and that his role is to punish his partner or children if they act in a way he does not approve of. Mm. <laughs> this means is very dangerous, eh? Because any reference to provocation means that we are blaming the woman and relieving the abuser of responsibilities of his actions. You're always blaming the woman. You are relieving the abuser of his actions. Abuse or violence of any kind is never the victim's fault. Responsibility always lies with the perpetrator and with him alone. Please. I believe I will be able to, 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 to read you guys some message that I actually got from my Instagram when I, when I was live. I screenshot a lot of messages that I will be 
I will read it to you guys, okay? Um, then they say, meet six. Domestic abuse is a private family matter and not a social issue. It becomes a social issue when you are trying to take the life of, a, of somebody, of a weak person. It becomes a social issue. So why do you feel is is a family is a private family matter? Why do you feel so? Marisha says violence and abuse against women and children in cause high cost for society, hospital treatment, medications, court proceedings, lawyer fees, imprisonment. Not to mention the psychological and physical impact on those who experience it. Do you see the cost of things it will cause for the society? All too often, when women disclose their habits, no one listens to them, and no one asks them what they would like, what they would like for it to happen next. That's why women hate have launched a new approach for domestic abuse, survivors and their children. Um, there's this women hate that is called change um change that last. That change that last actually help. You know, if you are being abused or you are a victim, please try to contact these people. Change that last. Just try and check it on your Google. It's um it's a site that they have they come for women hate. The app builds the survivors and place their hearts at, at, at rest, okay? So guys, domestic violence happens every single day, all over the world, as me and you are talking. It's, it's happening somewhere. And it affects all women of ages, class, background. It is serious. Despite all this, these women aids, they are organizations that are campaigning to bring out the voice of these survivors. Do you know how many women have been killed to this own violence? Do you know how many women? Do you know how many women have lost their, their soul? Like if you should start counting the rate of women that have they have lost their soul and much more. If you go to the prison, most times now mostly about men who kills their women and there are more there are more of them than those who create commit commit crimes like um like um, stealing or, or or drugs you know the rate is just too much the rate is too much please before getting married consult the face of our lord jesus christ consult the face of him because him alone once the marriage is built on the solid rock, on the foundation of Jesus Christ, you have nothing to be worried about. Problems, trials will come, but you'll be able to overcome them together. He said, a man and a woman shall leave his father's house. They shall click together, become one flesh. They shall become one and not two. So everything they do, they should reason together. They will become one and not two any longer. No outsider should be able to come in between them. But if the man is trying to make outsiders come, it is the man's fault, not your fault. Speak out. Speak out. Don't say, how what will people say about me? What will people say about me that I, I, I did a marriage of 35 billion era. My marriage was cost, I did this, I did that. Don't be the marriage one breaks. What will people say? I can't afford to, to, to be laughed at. I can't afford for people to mock me now. I can't afford not to be called a to, to be called a divorcee. Your life matters. Oh. Your life matters. Oh. Mr. Wright can always be there waiting for you. Who love you will not reason the father to marry before or you've even given birth before. Let's be wise. Even if those were themselves. So, um, okay. Um, Marisha says. 
um, we have to ensure that the survivors' voice are heard. We will describe domestic violence as private family issue. We, we minimize and we permit it. Okay? We minimize and we permit it to go forward. If we describe it as a family issue, we are minimizing it and we are permitting it to go forward. Just like this man, I, I, I saw this video of this girl self repairing our road and everything in you know, this state of forgotten. This lawyer beat up his wife and um, he was locked up. And this governor went in Nigeria. I know you guys know, but I can't really remember his name. Well, I am so I can't really remember. I don't know, I don't know what I don't know. I can't remember his name. So he went and begged his lawyer and set up a boat of them and said they are their husband and wife. They should come together. So my, my, my issue was like, okay, governor, you've not shown to a lawyer uh, a family, um, like a family, <laughs> are you not a family peace, like, are you not a therapist or your governor is supposed to create psychologists, ter therapists, um, hospitals growth for these people so that they'll, they'll be able to think well? Why are you going to save only this man, releasing him first of all, without asking the woman if she really wants it? Why are you going to save only this man? What about those who have been abused long time ago? Why didn't you go there to save him? Is it that this man has something he's doing for you? He's defending you with that you went to, like I was, the thing was so, so suspicious, but who am I? It is well. So, there is this myth number seven. They say pornography is not linked to violence against women. Okay, pornography in the sense of um, the man is always um, watching porn. Mm. Even if he has a wife. So, some people, it's not um, a domestic violence to women. To me, it's a domestic violence because the moment the man starts watching this porn and tries to make his wife to give him the exact positions he washes there and his wife is not the child and can't give it to him he gets sexually aroused and anger he starts looking outside somewhere he can get this this satisfaction to get satisfied or even worse he starts masturbating and he starts depriving his wife of um, of this care and of love and of this sexual affection let's read and see what i say concise but i feel so i i know so i know this thing is, is true pornography do affect women the masters worship pornography Sorry guys, I had to quickly answer my home bell. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to answer. So, uh, we stopped at the fact that some people say there is a myth that says pornography do, does not affect the women. So, I'm going to read to you guys my research that it actually does affect the women. So, It says most customers or consumers, sorry, consumers of pornography are male, and pornography material is becoming increasing explicit violence and focused on male pleasure. It's also freely available to get to to anyone online, and studies indicate it as it is it is how many young people find out about sex because it's online. Because I normally do receive, there was a time I do receive this notification about, they would just send me a notification like, um, I'm available, um, or something like Sarah is closed, it's available, or they would just send me something like with books. I would just be like, what is this? Who are all these? I did not click on any of this link. Or maybe, so I had to. 
keep on swiping off because somebody might carry my phone and such things are clear that will be like, I just want to watch photography, I'll push is not true. So a friend of mine had to tell me, maybe you went into one of all these um, links where you do go to read news, all these Italian news. Maybe it was there you, you mistakenly clicked on it or as you clicked on the link, it opens and shows you the news you want to read. But as you go, it will start sending you notifications. I was like, it could be, it could be. Understand? And these things do make young, young people get to know about sex in the wrong way. In the wrong way. Because they are not being taught sex education, but they are being taught the violent parts of sex. And it's at first, it is not good. Because there are lots of things on this pornography. Though pornography itself is sin, it's a sin, like it's. Because it, 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 it gets to the individual, and if the individual starts, if there is nobody around he or she, they start to masturbate. And this is a sin against the Most High. Okay? So, my. Marisha says, pornography contributes to a culture of misogyny in which women and girls are abused by men for pleasure, for, 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 for male pleasure. Women are harmed by pornography in two ways, directly when they are used for the production of pornographic materials and indirectly through the effects of mainstream availability and consumption of violence. Okay. Women are being affected um, through the ways I said before, and they are being um, affected directly by in by the movements of in which they are used for for pornography against their language. You know, because at times they will be like, "Okay, we'll pay you. You have to do this." The woman will be forced to do it because there are men around there. Yeah, this story is um, it's complicated because most times you see those women who are being trafficked, so they are even used sometimes in Libya or South Africa, in Nigeria, even here in Italy. They are being used for videos, they are being used to make such videos in which they are not even conscious of, they don't even know it is what it that is being published, they don't know. and. It's a fair, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sexual violence to the women, okay? So, it, is, it can arm the women directly when they are being used, okay? For example, let's say a man who is married to a woman starts getting used to pornography, starts watching pornography. So, when she, when he, when she starts, when he starts watching his pornography, it tends to want to get the style, the ginger he get from pornography. So he tries, he tries to inflict it on his wife. And if his wife is the type that cannot give him exactly that style, what does he do? The moment he tries to have intercourse with his wife, he uses the force, the method he sees in the pornography, whereby harming the lady, trying to turn the lady to, to, to a pornographic figure. Then it can affect the women indirectly in a method in which the man might be like, okay, if you just go into the house, connect and put pornography in the TV and start washing with the lady. And the lady might not be comfortable, but it will be like, we are not babies. I want to wash this. I want to get her rose. I want to get her rose before, before sleeping with she. So the lady will be like, I can't uh, get this. And it will be like, so you can't get arose with with me without washing pornography. This lady is already affected. So there are ways and ways that these ladies are being affected. You should start listing them. There are like thousands and thousands of them. If we should start going forward, okay. I I will leave the last one here, which says um women women um women um are just as abusive as men this i'm going to continue with this topic but for today i'm going to leave you guys here okay he said women are just as abusive as men in reality women are, are abusive with our mouth the moment you start abusing us if we tell you one word you will be like saying you move your kidney it will be like sharp knife 
that has really made me get mouth. So our words can inflict a sharp pain, can pierce you. We can't, we won't harm you, we won't beat you. But our words are strong. But you see, the men, they will give you the physical and the, and the, and the psychological torture. We I just wear insults. That is the only way we find we can deal with you. So women are not as violent as men. Don't ever say that. So my research says, in most, in majority of cases, domestic abuse is experienced by men and per perpetrated by, uh, sorry, is experienced by women and perpetrated by men. A woman is killed by a male partner or former partner every four years in the UK, England and Wales. This is just the UK. Whereby they are able to take statistics, they are able to collect data, dates and numbers of people being killed. Talk about Africa where they don't take data, statistics are not done. Do you know how many have been killed every four years? Every year. What are they talking? Every year. And domestic violence is on the rise as we are speaking right now in Nigeria. That is why I started to talk about this topic. We need to stop this. We need to say, we need to speak out. We ladies, we need to speak out and make a campaign. Enough is enough. You married me to be your companion, your wife, not to be your punching bag. If you're tired, let me go. Instead of punishing and killing somebody. <laughs> this video I watched yesterday, I was so touched about a lady who una, una speaks through pipe. Her uh, 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 ex-boyfriend um, actually shoots her, so the gun came through from her back like this and passed through here and came out here. I saw the thing on, on, on Facebook and I was like, the man is devilish. So where is the man now? He says, um, she said it was the last time she heard, the man is in... Um, is in, um, he has COVID-19, but um, she believes the man is still in police station. Okay, what really happened that this man had to shoot you? The man is a serviceman. He's a, should I say he's a police or a soldier, a militant. So they were dating. When they have gone for introduction and everything, just few weeks or few months, they were supposed to get married in December. This man called and told her, I'm no longer interested. So she said she passed and went to stay with her friend. So after some time, then because she's still in love, the man called her and told her, come, I want to see you. When she went to see the man in the restaurant, the man was like, stop telling people that I, 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 I broke up with you, that I did not marry you again. So she was like, okay, fine, no problem. So she stood up and was ahead of the man going away. The man was at, his, at her back. So she, her phone rang and she was like picking, listening to the call. The next thing she saw was the man cocked his, um, his gun. He cocked it and shot her. The bullet passed through here. Passed through here and came out here. If not God, I wonder how she survived it. Because bullet passed through here, coma for a year, for a year. I was like, what is this? Why couldn't he just let you be since he told you he doesn't want again? And you agreed. It's not like you are still there for him. What is this? I was so touched and I was like, I was kind of afraid, you know. I was like, what is this? If you see this lady now, her mouth is almost like cut off. She talks really from her side. She talks with pipe. So when she was taken to the hospital, she stayed in coma. So they did some operations for her. During the operation, they made a mistake. Nigeria. The nurse and big doctors made a mistake. They had to do another operation. Now she's going for another operation again. She said only God knows how much she has spent for almost more than four million. What happened? The elder brother of the boy came and was and dropped her thirty and twenty five thousand. Thirty thousand, I think so. And he told her she should please she should not press charges against his brother. She should try and to make sure that his uniform is not taken away from him. She should please not press charges so that they will not take his uniform and rank away from him. That the promise they will grant he has for her, they will be paying her to five thousand every month for one year. So she said, No, I want justice. The medicine alone she's taking is almost forty thousand every every week, I'll be every month. And you are telling me twenty five thousand every month. So you are concerned about your brother's uniform, his rank, 
not about me. Would they do your sister? This story, you know, you guys need to watch the story. It's a real life story. I watched it on Facebook. I don't know if I still can show you guys. And I don't know if YouTube would permit me. I would have showed you guys. I was shocked. This, was, this is an Igbo girl, yeah. Igbo girl. You go to Facebook, you share for Igbo, Igbo TV, Igbo TV or so. You see it. Not sure, they don't usually post Igbo stuff. The reason why I was able to hear what she said was that she was speaking Pidgin. Then when it got to her father's tone, her father started speaking Igbo. I was like, men are... Ah. If the devils enter them before they be, before they do something, they don't think twice. I was shocked. How could you do such to somebody's daughter? Our family is the poor type because if our family was the rich type, I believe the case would be at court now. But no, the man is just in the police station without facing any jail yet. If she was a rich person, I believe they would not even go to court. They would just call the police station and be like. Put some on that ground for kiri kiri. Don't judge the case. Just put some on that ground for kiri kiri. Don't judge the case. Don't judge the case. If she was from a rich family, you know. But she's not from a rich family, so for the now she's just over her getting okay. She thank God and I thank God for her life, you know, for the breaths of life. When I watched it. I said, God, I glorify your name. I'm sorry if I've been ungrateful. She was talking this way, just with one side. And the one side was, you know, thank God, you are great. And I thank God for her life. It's not easy. It's not easy. So, guys, this, um, this, um, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm, Definitely going to finish this uh, part that says women are just as abusive as men. Then I'll conclude. So my research says, um, the majority of defendants in domestic abuse related persecutions were men. The majority of females were seventy were seventy five in terms of cases. The sex of the victims was not recorded. Two thousand nineteen is a grounded crime, which is deeply rooted in society inequality between women and men. Women are more likely than men to experience multiple incidents of abuse, different type of domestic abuse and sexual violence, particularly. Domestic abuse ex exists as part of the wider spectrum of violence against women and girls, which also includes different forms of family violence, such as forced marriage. Female genital mutilation, that one that they do circumcise, and so called unknown crimes that are perpetrated primarily by family members. Okay, so, um, guys, I'm going to end this here on um, our very next um, topic again. When I'll see you guys, I will go much more deeper because I have more, more things to say about the habits. I have more and more and more topics. And I'll be going to be reading um, the parts I said, you know. Um, okay, let me just quick read this parts of somebody. Okay, it says, um, sounds like your picker is broken. My friend said that I told her the story. This is a terrible thing to say to someone who just left an abusive partner. It implies survivors are doomed to an abusive fate. Fate, something I refuse to believe. So she just left a uh, abusive partner. She stood up and left. So this friend of ours, like, sounds like your picker is broken. So she said, when I met my ex in 2014, I knew he, uh, he, he would be a terrible person to date. A phone would call, perhaps nothing more. He was too young, too unsettled, he smoked too much. Too much pot and too much pot and was super insecure, jealousy. But what different did it make? I was a master at compartmentalizing and purely physical. It was a dangerous combo of cute, normal, amused by my joke and great in bed. At twenty-six, I was a starving artist, selling pizza to entitled terrorists for rent money. Sneaking kisses behind the dumpster gave me something to look forward to at a job I hated. 
every fiber of my blue said to be careful everything just wasn't right with this fella but it sure was exciting my intuition was whispered wrong my intuition whispered wrong but my ego screamed fun something in her told her wrong from the beginning but her head ego told her it was fun so by the time i realized my mistake i was caught in a web of codependency love fear and self delusion the first time i tried to break up with me threatening to throw himself off a bridge the first time he violently raped me and yet i still worried about him more than myself before i finally got out he had tried to drive us both off a cliff kill the both of them we died together Selma and Liu sigh minus the hand holding and inspirational music i never doubted that i had i needed to leave but I kept putting it off part, partly because I was addicted to him, but mostly because living is when women in abusive relationship are most likely to get killed. Thank God for my friend who packed up my truck themselves. This is the reason why you need to speak up. Your friends might help you. Once I left him, I was terrified of men, especially anyone who looked like him, who wore plate shirts or had hand tattoos or overgrown beards. You see? That was the first question I asked. Do rape and um, violence victims find it able to trust their partners or men again after being raped or violated? The first video I did, go and check it out. My first priority was to regain my confidence. I threw myself into common writing and community of power as women who not shot me back to head. Kicking boss classes helps me a lot, like those um, class you go to punch and you know. It helps me a lot because it helps you to take out all the anger and neighbors. It helps me, it, it helps me not only feel strong again, but gave me an healthy outlet for my rage. But I soon realized this fury wasn't actually at him. Forcing myself, first, forgiving my head was the easy part. Forgiving myself was another story. How could I, an ardent feminist who had worked so hard to love herself, end up with a violent, misogynistic psychopath who made me hate myself? Because I was sick, I realized dangerously codependent. The worst part of getting out of an abusive relationship was not being able to trust myself and my choices anymore. My friend was wrong. My picker wasn't broken. It had warned me. I would just, I just willfully ignored it. I am not victim blaming, nor am I saying I deserve it, or that this is everyone's experience, but I believe I can protect myself so long as I trust my intuition. After a year long alone, I was back to my old self, stronger, more confident that I have better been with getting my ex. I was ready for the big challenge, letting men back into my life. The only way I could learn to trust and protect myself again was to practice doing so, not just on dates, but in the bedroom too. I won't let this one man ruin the collective old or make sex forever or bad drama. I spent the next two years on Tinder. For the first time, I let my tuition be my forward. Not logic or ego, I read this screen made for me to know. After a while, I could tell from their first message if they were worth my time. I learned to match a high because men can, who can bother to make an effort, not even capitalize the hash, seem to feel unexcited to my time without trying. Generic message that we are clearly copy and paste were red flag too. That's even lazier than high. Stupid questions like asking me what my superpower would be almost bad. My profile included pictures of my, myself as a rap guy, climber, world travel. That was too much I could easily inquire about as an icebreaker. Men who wouldn't read my profile did not impress me. I went on dates regularly, great ones. For the first time in my life, I let men I was genuinely interested in take me to dinner without feeling obligated to give them anything in return. But I told I told them the deal instead of putting us in both that awkward position. Relationships are built on trust, and I was it was going to take me longer than the usual women to build. I told them if they really liked me, they would have to be okay with me. Shortly, they appreciated my conduct. So guys, it's so hard and so so false. I could, I would love to read more, but I will, I will come back and say more. Actually, let me just okay. So she says this body belongs to me and me alone. My job was to protect it at all costs. 
you know it goes on and, and so forth i just want to appreciate you guys for being here with me today i really do appreciate it um please learn to love yourself and learn to know when to get, go out of your abuse relationship i just shared a real life story almost still with you guys so i couldn't finish this last one but i hope you got the facts where she said she finally left the relationship okay thank you very much see you guys next very soon i love you guys women the brave and strong